In this video, I will provide you with some information that might help you make your job a little easier if you're planning on building a five-sided pentagon shaped gazebo with a roof that has a 9 and 12 pitch on it. So that's what we're looking at here. And our rafters are 16 inches on center. We're basically going to take the gazebo apart to provide you with, in my opinion, a better idea about the construction process and what might be required to build something like this and of course make your job a little easier. And I did shape one of the posts. I will be providing you with a little more insight about that when we start putting everything back together. And as you can see here, when we remove the soil, we have five footings and some post base connecting hardware. And of course our shaped connector I don't know if you need to use a 4x6 base connector and then cut it because I don't think we're going to be dealing with that much structural weight on this particular project. But if you're going to be building something a little larger, then you might want to give it a little more thought as to whether or not you're going to need a larger post base connector. So as you can see, I shaped the outside and the inside. However, you might just choose to shape the outside or the inside, or neither, whatever's going to work better for your project. And I like to make sure that my post base connectors are off the ground a little bit, or that the bottom of the post base connector sits on top of the concrete, providing me with about a quarter inch distance between the top of the concrete and the bottom of the wood post. And of course, our four by four post base connector and how it is positioned now don't forget you could always make the slab a little larger if you don't like this look or if you're looking for a stronger footing connection. And of course that can be done by simply extending the width of the pentagon at the bottom. And you can see here how the beams are supported by the 4x4. And I don't know if they have any hardware that would work. However, I think you could use some framing anchors and even some straps to connect everything together. And the straps really might not work good here on the inside or the outside. However, on the shaped post, I think you're going to be able to use a strap on the outside and possibly on the inside. You could see where you could run something up here on both sides and of course do it on the outside here. You could run a strap right there and uh, connect everything together. And this method right here will provide you with a little more materials for the beams to sit on. And you can almost see where it's full bearing here. The beams are sitting on the outside and the inside, unlike the 4x4 connections. Next up, let's go ahead and install our hip rafters. And you can usually just toenail these from this section and from this section and on the other sides. And if you need to, you could always use some framing hardware. And this end of the hip will need to be shaped for the fascia board. We will be using the square and not the plumb assembly method. Take a look at the bottom of the hip rafters. And again, this is a 9 and 12 roof pitch. And for those of you who might not be aware, you're not going to be using the 9 and 17 formula for something like a regular house with 90 degree corners. And I will be making another video on that in the future. When exactly that's going to happen, I don't know. But I do plan on making a few more videos. If you have any questions about building something like this, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And if it's something I think other people will be interested in, I will definitely make a video. And of course, our jack rafters here. This will not be a 45 degree angle either. And our blocking. And you could put a block in here if you want to. And you can increase or decrease the length of the fascia board for a longer or shorter overhang. And if done correctly, each one of these will be the same size. This will be the same size as this one. This will be the same size as this one. And the center one here will be the same size as this one, along with this one will be the same as this one, and so on. And like I said, that's if you cut everything the same, all of your measurements are right on the money, all of your angles. And that will usually start with the building foundation being laid out accurately. Next up, let's go ahead and install our fascia board. 
And of course, the square cut I was referring to is right here to position the fascia board. And the jack rafters here will line up with this edge here. And I believe I'm using 2x6 in my model for the rafters and a 3x8 for the hip that was actually shaped. I think I shaved an inch off of the width to make it look a little better from the bottom. And of course the corners or the edges of the hip will line up with the fascia board, not this. The center of the hip here will not line up with the center of this unless you have shaped the hip rafter. So you can kind of see here where once we put the plywood on, kind of go back and forth here to give you an idea of how the plywood is going to sit on top of the rafters and kind of come in here a little bit to where there will be a void here or an area that won't provide a solid surface for the sheathing to sit on top of. But you shouldn't have a problem with that. And if you're worried about that, shape the top of the hips. And next up, I will show you how to use the common rafters instead of the hip rafters that might be difficult for you to calculate the angle for when trying to frame a roof for a pentagon shaped building or a building with five equal sides. So the first thing we want to do is find the center of the building and the center where the rafters are going to connect to each other. And that can be done by finding the middle of one side and then connecting it to the other side, the point here. And you're going to want to do that from at least two sides. So you can do it from either one of these sides. We're doing it from this side here to locate the center. So not too difficult, I hope. And instead of using this measurement here, we're going to use this measurement here and use common rafters instead of hip rafters. And you can see here where we have a five foot measurement for our hip rafters and a four foot and nine and sixteenths inches for our common rafters. And that's going to look something like this. So we're going to come off of the center. We're going to center our rafters in these locations. And then we're going to calculate the length of a common rafter. Now I do have another video on that. I will put a link to that in the video description area instead of walking you through the process in this video here. Now I have the rafters sitting on top of the concrete slab. The rafters will be in the same position sitting on top of the framed walls. And instead of showing the walls, I figured it would be better to use the measurements on the concrete slab to show you the position of the roof rafters. And again, the rafter here is located in the center. The center of the roof rafter will line up with the center line on this side of the building. And then we will go up to the top where we have a line coming through the center of the floor. So I just kind of drew a line from the center here straight up. This is a vertically plumb line and it's coming up through the center of the rafter. And you're going to be able to find the center, this measurement here, by using the roof rafter calculation methods that I have in the other video. And I will also be providing you with an example of how we can calculate this particular rafter length for this particular project at the end of the video. Now when it comes to making our cuts here, our cuts will be at a 36 degree angle. We have a 72 degree angle here, or should I say we have five 72 degree angles. Half of that is 36 degrees, and that's going to be the angle here that you're going to be cutting so that all of the rafters connect at the top center as shown here. So let's go ahead and take a look at it from the top. Again, this is the center coming up, a level line off of the center. These measurements might not work if you do not have a perfectly shaped pentagon with all of the angles correctly positioned along with equal measurements around the perimeter of the building. And of course, this is what it would look like after you cut and installed your five roof rafters. And for those of you who are familiar with just simply measuring from this point to this point to calculate your hip rafter, then you won't need to watch the next video where I will be providing you with 
the methods for calculating the hip rafters and using the hip rafters instead of the common rafters as our starting point for those of you who want to use that method instead of this method here. And in the last section of the video, let's walk you through the method that you can use to calculate the length of the roof rafter. That's going to be from the center point here to the center point here. And hopefully this will make sense. We basically start with a triangle. This is the pitch of the roof or the angle of the roof. And even though it's on the ground there and the points don't line up with the top, if we simply raise this triangle to the top point here, we're going to end up with the exact measurement that we need and the angle of the roof. We're raising this the exact height that we're going to have from the top of our seat cut to the top of the roof rafter. And that would look something like this here. The measurement from here to here and not from down here. The measurement from the corner of the seat cut with a plumb line straight up. And hopefully that makes sense. And to figure out the length of the rafter that we need, we're going to start with converting this number to a decimal that would represent feet so that we can calculate the height here for our 5 and 12 roof pitch slope. So for every 12 inches, we're going to go up 5 inches vertically. So if we went 24 inches or 2 feet, we would be going up 10 inches. And if we go up 4 feet, we're going to go up 20 inches. You can see right here where this is 20 and a quarter inches. However, even though I'm showing you a triangle here, you're not going to have this information. The only information you're going to have will be this number here or the base measurement from our building foundation. So let's go ahead and convert this to a decimal in feet. And what I'm going to do here is just take 9 and divide it by 16. That's going to give me this number here. And then I'm going to divide this number by 12. That's going to give me this number here. And I'm not going to walk you through the whole process for converting these decimals because I have more information on this in the video I was referring to that I will have a link to in the video description box. So this decimal here represents 9 sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to simply add 4 to it. 4 feet right here, 9 sixteenths. And since I have a 5 and 12 roof pitch, if you have a different roof pitch, you're going to enter that number here. I have a 5 and 12 roof pitch. I'm simply going to multiply this number times 5. And that's going to give me this number right here. And then I can either convert this number to feet or I can convert this number to inches and then use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the hypotenuse of the triangle. So to convert this number to feet, I'm simply going to divide it by 12. That's going to give me 1.68. I'm going to use 1.686. So let me go ahead and clear that. 1.686. This number here is feet and inches. This number here will be the decimal for this one here, for feet and inches as feet. So as long as I have my two decimals, I can square these so that we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to use 2.842, and then I'm going to add that to this number squared. And that's going to be 4.0. Four, six. And I'm simply multiplying this number by itself when I push this button. So I need to add these two numbers together. So 16.370, let's add that to 2.842, and that's going to be this. And then I'm going to get the square root of that number. 4.383 will be this number here as a decimal. So to figure this out in inches, I'm simply going to multiply this number times 12. And that's going to give me 52.59 inches, or just a little bit over 4 foot 4 and 9 sixteenths of an inch. And that's how we calculate this number. Again, it just kind of ran you through it, but you might want to go check out the other video if some of this doesn't make sense. And again, if something doesn't make sense in the video, feel free to leave your questions in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button.
or letting us know in the comment area.